What is going on guys? This is Daniel, and one thing that stood out to me while watching the Celtics in these playoffs are their brilliant after timeout plays. Brad Stevens does a tremendous job of drawing up plays that fit the personnel on the floor, and the Celtics execute these plays to perfection. This is nothing new, Stevens drawing up great plays, but watching in the playoffs, it's so apparent that these plays give the Celtics a slight advantage that could help them win a close game. Let's get to it. Stevens likes to utilize Isaiah Thomas as a screener in some of these plays. Here's a screen the screener set where he'll set a back screen and then he'll receive a down screen to the top. And the key on this play is that it's Thomas setting that back screen. The defense is concerned about him and here the Bulls do not communicate well. Two guys stay on Thomas and Jalen Brown gets the lob. Here's a similar screen the screener set. And when Thomas sets that first screen, John Wall doesn't help as he knows Thomas is about to run off a down screen, and this leaves Olenek open. Now, normally the defense will find a way to take that first pass away, but that's fine for the Celtics. Thomas gets a down screen into a dribble pitch, and this time he hits the jumper. Same play, and this is really good offensive progression. Thomas gets the handoff, turns the corner, and finds Olenek on the pick and pop. Stevens is terrific at disguising plays, or having two plays that start off the same way, and this is a great example of that. Same setup, and the whole defense thinks Thomas is going to set that first cross screen, which is what he usually does. But instead, he sets a back screen for Jay Crowder on top, and the Wizards aren't expecting this. They mess up the switch, and Crowder gets a layup. Wow. In Game 5, Stevens thought outside of the box and had Thomas ball screen for Al Horford. He first sets a back screen for Amir Johnson, and then he sets the ball screen, and the Wizards simply switch it, so now Horford has a smaller defender on him, so he posts up and scores. When an out-of-timeout play works for the Celtics, Stevens may call it again on the next possession, which is what happens here. Thomas runs the same play, setting the back screen for Johnson, which could result in a layup once in a while. Then he screens for Horford, and this time, the Wizards don't switch. Gortat goes under the screen, which lets Horford shoot the jumper. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's Steven's mentality here, as they run this play for a third straight possession, and this time the Wizards foul while the Celtics are in the bonus. Moving on from Thomas setting screens, so the Celtics often play a three-point shooting center, and Stevens likes to take advantage of this after timeouts. Here's a play where they're setting up a double staggered screen for Thomas, but he's in fact decoy, as what they're really looking for is Horford on the flare screen. This is excellent misdirection, and Horford is open, but for some reason he doesn't take the three, and they get a worse shot. This is a different set where there will be a weave on top and what they'll set up is Horford setting a back screen for Gerald Green. On this play, Robin Lopez helps out on the back screen which frees up Horford for the three. Same set and the Wizards do a nice job of defending the back screen on this occasion. But the Celtics offense doesn't die, they immediately flow into a dribble pitch for Avery Bradley and he gets a layup. Good offense. To start the fourth quarter, Stevens recognized that Olenek was being guarded by Jan Mahimi, a traditional center who's not super agile. So the Celtics set up a play where Olenek comes off a down screen. Predictably, Mahimi is not able to get out on Olenek, and he gets the open jumper, though Stevens would have preferred if this was a three-point shot. The very next possession, Stevens has the Celtics exploit the same mismatch. Olenek runs off a screen. This time he'll drive and find Crowder on a backdoor cut. The three-point shooting center doesn't have to be directly involved in the play for Stevens to draw up a play revolved around having a three-point shooting center on the floor. That's what happens here as the play is designed for Thomas to drive while Olenek is at the top of the key, dragging the rim protector Mahimi away from the basket so Thomas can drive and score without a problem. Mahimi being at the top was in no position to help at the rim. Let's bounce around a bit and talk about some more ATO sets Here's one where Marcus Smart will set a screen first for Durepko who you can't see, but what they're setting up is a seal for Smart inside. 
This works because Smart is big and strong, and also the defense just isn't expecting this. Smart seals very deep, catches it. This draws in Dwayne Wade on the help, so he kicks it out to Green for the three. The next play utilizes the clear out which I've talked about in the past. The Celtics will get it to Crowder and he'll drive baseline. And while this is happening, Smart will seal out his man. So there's no help on the drive and Crowder gets a dunk attempt. There are several keys to this play, but I want to focus on two. The first is that Horford is on top. This makes it nearly impossible for Gortat to help and protect the rim when Crowder drives. The second key is that Smart is calm before he seals. This disguises the play well and keep your eye on Smart as you'll notice when he does seal, he does it fast and aggressive. The next play is called Elbow Get and it's very simple. It's a rub screen for Crowder and the Celtics have Smart setting the screen as he's a good screener and there's nothing special about this play but it puts the Bulls into a position where they could easily make a mistake which they do here. Wade doesn't switch or help on this rub screen so Crowder is open for a layup. Elbow get again. The Wizards contain the first action and then the Celtics flow into a pick and roll. Nice stuff. And notice how they have Thomas positioned in the weak side corner on this pick and roll. He's a threat and the Wizards face guard him. So there is no weak side help on a Linux roll. Great job by Stevens to have the positioning all sorted out. This is a set the Celtics have been running successfully for years. What it is is it looks like they're about to set up a dribble handoff but Thomas will actually backdoor cut looking for the layup there. It's well defended on this play, but notice how the Celtics keep on moving. They're playing with a purpose, there's screens, there's passing, and Thomas gets an open shot. This is a set where Bradley comes off a down screen and gets an open jumper, but there's way more to this play than what immediately meets the eye. The first important part of this play happens on the handoff between Jarebko and Bradley. The Bulls switch it because Butler and Bobby Portis aren't too different in size so they say why not let's switch it. This was a mistake as the Celtics aren't trying to score here and the Bulls didn't need to switch it. But it's a key part of the play as Steven set it up so that's an option for the Bulls to mess up to switch that. Then Linux sets a ball screen and the Bulls will hedge in part because Alinek is a pick and pop threat. Then Alinek sets the down screen for Bradley and Portis who's guarding Bradley now is not accustomed to chasing guards off screens and Laverne who had the hedge is not ready or in position to help on Bradley so Bradley gets the open three. Nice! That was my reaction when I saw this play. It's a sideline out of bounds play that starts with a shuffle cut for the inbounder, Smart. And the Celtics aren't looking for Smart really, what they're looking for is Crowder on the seal. He's the screener and this could work on a switch or here he takes advantage of poor positioning by Porter. He seals and draws the foul. Clever. Well, there you have it guys. The plays I mentioned in this video were my favorite out of timeout plays that I saw at the Celtics run in the playoffs. But keep in mind that there are other plays, a lot of other plays they run out of timeouts. And Stevens just has a lot of plays at his disposal, probably more than other coaches for other teams. It's really interesting to watch, and next time you watch the Celtics, keep an eye out for the out-of-timeout plays, the first possession the Celtics run out of a timeout. There's a good chance the play they run is something good. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.